Welcome, everybody. This is the 2022 IBS show, and I'm with Fred Ballard, Gib Underdown, and Dave Tam today. My name's Jeff Burgess. I'm sales manager with Thrive Mortgage. And Dave, tell us what we're going to talk about. Oh boy, thanks. <laughs> what we're going to be talking about is the modern new construction space. Obviously here with Thrive Mortgage, we're going to be talking about the Healthy Home Initiative and what that actually means. So Fred, we're going to peel back those layers. To you, what does healthy homes actually mean? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, the way I approach it, because you got to know, right? So when you're finished with your project, how did you do? Yeah. The way we approach it is we first start out with what a healthy home isn't. And a healthy home isn't moldy, obviously. <laughs> Doesn't have a lot of volatile organic compounds flying around. And some people have other sensitivities that we address kind of one by one. So we had start out with what do we need to eliminate from this home and approach it that way. Interesting. So given given what you've encountered in the building space obviously you've done some really high-end builds out there what are some of the best practices and and tools and technology that you use um, to, to do that process that you just talked about so we are in texas okay which is we get more than 20 inches of rain a year so okay. that qualifies us in a humid environment okay. and it's obviously hot now where Gibbs from, it's a cold, dry climate, and honestly, all the building codes are kind of biased towards a colder, dry climate. And they talk about venting a home, letting a home breathe, vapor retarders. In our climate, the most important thing is our moisture management, which obviously begins with the, the building envelope, the roof and the walls. And beyond that, we look at how we control the humidity we bring into the home. Mm -hmm. You know, we shower in our homes. Mm -hmm. We have put out moisture. So we have to design that or have a, a, a mechanical engineer design the home in every system so that it dehumidifies while it's cooling. And then we go one step beyond that in a lot of instances and actually add whole house dehumidifiers to and a, and a really a dedicated return air system that brings in fresh air dries it and then dumps it on the supply side of our AC systems and the supply side plenum and that makes that whole thing work better and we're not relying just on the cooling load to dehumidify because some days in Texas aren't blazing hot. Right. Maybe 75 degrees and your AC is not running. Right. And we design homes to be super energy efficient so it doesn't run all the time. Well that doesn't help you with the humidity and if you get if your relative humidity in the home is say over 50%, whatever is tolerable. Um, that's moisture in the air that is acting as a solvent for the impurities that, that get into your home. Interesting. They, we, we start out with impurities, we can off gas those, but we're always bringing in things that could make some clients feel sensitive. That is, so what I'm taking from this is something you were telling me earlier is there, there's also not just the impurities in the air, but when we're talking about electromagnetic fields and the electricity, like that, what you were telling me earlier blew my mind. What, tell me a little bit about that. And then, and then I'm going to pivot over to Gibbs so we can talk about some of the systems and software to make all this come to life. So all data transmitting electronics obviously have uh, electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic fields. And electromagnetic fields are everywhere. Our bodies have them, the right. earth has it. Some people are, are more sensitive than others. You know, I, I don't feel like I'm sensitive at all. I, I don't live under a power line. You know, all electricity, is, it's electrons flowing, right? Mm -hmm. So we have clients now, have had clients in the past that have been diagnosed as being sensitive to electromagnetic radiation. And it's everywhere. You know, Elon Musk is putting Starlink in the air. We're going to have 5G. We have to have 5G if we're going to have driverless cars. So how do we deal with that? And the way we do that is we shield safe places in the home. And modularize, modularize. Yeah. I need a cue card for that one. <laughs> and the, just say the master bedroom and turn that off at night so you don't have your high voltage coming through. You can shield the whole house. You know, uh, commercial codes require that you put all your high voltage cabling inside metal conduit, either flex or rigid conduit. I didn't conduit. know that. 
And that shields that from your home. You know, you, you deal with your internet with hard wiring and you're able to give them a safe place at night to recharge, so to speak, or decharge. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found that that works quite well. So this is, this is fascinating to me. Are you actually putting, inserting shielding into you know, the drywall, the walls itself, as well as the cabling? We have on occasion. Wow. You can put a, a mesh before you put up your wall board Usually sheetrock, yeah, paperless yeah. sheetrock sheet, yep. um, is better than paper. That's a different issue. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we can actually shield that. You, then you have your windows to deal with. If you use a metal roof, that's shielding. Yeah. Um, and you can do the same thing in a day spot. You know, you can have your TV watching area and you know shield that. Very interesting. So if somebody wants to learn more about that, how do they get in touch with you? Is there? So we're not experts on that. We follow other people's leads. Me too. You know, I, I'm not an architect. I'm not an engineer. I'm yeah. not a PhD. Yeah, me neither. I'm just a builder. And <laughs> they tell us, you know, you heard the saying, you can tell a builder, but you can't tell them much. <laughs> we listen to certain people okay. and uh, contact me, and I'll be glad to pass those Excellent. leads on. Thank you for that. Absolutely. So so from a systems perspective, mm -hmm. right, we've got a lot of moving parts in there from the logistics, the data, the tracking, the processes. For everybody that doesn't know, we've got Gig from Acumatica. Am I saying that right? Correct. I'm oh my goodness. With Action Associates, we're a partner. Oh, perfect, yes. perfect. Yeah, so tell us a little bit how we can leverage your platform mm -hmm. to make what he just said happen. Well, there's uh, lots of different ways to do it. All right. Um, with Action Associates, just to, I'd like to brag a little bit, we were just, uh, Given the accolade last week at the Acumatica Summit, we're the construction partner of the year. So I just want to oh, give really? that a Exactly. Awesome. <laughs> so, All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so really, what it, from a system standpoint, and what it, it really is, is enterprise software for mm -hmm. ERP. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is we're doing all the back office function of a of a, of a builder. So okay. the uh, the accounting, the job costing, the project management, all the data, the key, uh, key performance indicators, dashboards that they can look at to see how that process is moving through and, and doing cost analysis, cost to budget, things of that nature. Okay. Uh, we partner with a uh, what we call an independent software vendor or an ISV here at the show called Top Builder and they do a lot of the front end piece, the CRM, the marketing okay. to, to a home builder and then the uh, capability of doing features and options of that home and then being able to take that and creating that and passing that through into Acumatica to create the build the basically a bill of materials yep. of what's needed to require just from a from a contract standpoint. That's in, that's absolutely incredible. From mm -hmm. a mortgage perspective, right? If we're talking, we're going to be increasing the value of the home, the lifetime value of that transaction itself. How how would we use what Fred is talking about with the systems that we've got Gib to impact and influence the mortgage itself? Well, the fact of the matter is, is we do a one-time close, which gives the borrower a year to get that house built and then we modify into a fixed product that we've already closed. So we will give them an interest rate today that they know they're gonna get in a year. That's awesome. Having said that, we need that house to be built in 12 months. And if we're putting all the technology that's going into this house, <laughs> we need somebody to keep our builder on track, on Absolutely. budget, on time, and all this right. is where my man here comes. <laughs> and between the two of them, He's going to get the house done in 12 months. He's going to keep him on track. And I'm going to put the, uh, the homeowner into a mortgage that they knew what their payment was going to be before they uh, 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 started the bill, before they got the permit. Mm -hmm. And, and that, everything works perfectly at the that, end. That is huge right now with rates going up. They're yes, sir. Not, they're not going down. Yes, sir. No. We'll, we'll right. see. We have, we have the first in class product uh, across the nation in the construction firm business mm -hmm. and our timing just couldn't be better. I, I completely agree. I've worked with a lot of mortgage operations nationwide and what you guys are doing is, is pretty incredible. And it's trying to it's trying to push the industry forward, you know what I mean? And with and we've got to do that through innovation and new tools. Hi, welcome back. Jeff Burgess here at the 2022 International Business Show, the IBS. I have with me Alicia Norwood, my boss lady at Thrive Mortgage. <laughs> along with Nietzsche Gomez with Novi Home. And I'm Jeff Burgess again, uh, sales manager with Thrive Mortgage as well. Alicia, why don't you kick it off? Awesome, thanks Jeff. So Nietzsche, who is Novi Homes? So Novi Home, uh, we're a 
you know, small software company based out of uh, Cedar City, Utah. What we focus on, our foundation is buyer experience. Uh, our software is pretty much just powered by, by the buyer, you know, so uh, people seek out our business or services uh, to increase their buyer engagement. Awesome. So who do you guys predominantly serve? What type of builders? Larger builders, medium size, small builders? Yeah, so uh, a little bit of everything. So I think we kind of cap it up at uh, probably 2,000 homes per year uh, to begin with. Uh, that doesn't say we can't work with pro uh, publicly traded companies, but uh, we probably the range will be probably about 50 to 60 homes up to probably 2,000 homes a year. Wow. That's awesome. Great. So why do builders seek your service? Uh, like I like I alluded uh, earlier a little bit, it's, it's buyer engagement. So our software... Uh, you know, it helps builders to kind of increase the engagement, the communication between buyers and uh, the sales agents. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it also serves as a, a sales tool. Uh, it makes builders more efficient. So it helps the builders work uh, smarter, not harder. So you're letting the builders build the house and you guys are helping them build the brand and bring the client to, uh, to their front door. Absolutely, we're helping with the brand, but more than anything, we're helping with the engagement. Right now, the engagement, right now, uh, that's one of the biggest uh, things every builder is after. You know, everyone is selling homes uh -huh. uh, and, and they're selling them at a fast rate. So what can you utilize or what can you do to separate yourself from the competition and what we found through research is you know increasing your buyer engagement is kind of what to give you that leg up nice and do you do most of this when uh, before the contract during the contract during the build to the completion or you know when do you when do you guys actually start engaging with those great clients? question so we are considered a pre-sales tool uh -huh. okay we have some uh, some features and different things for after the the sale after the contract is signed but we are mostly uh, a buyer engagement on the pre-sale stages so is the builder paying for your services or is the real estate agent partnering with the builder for your services or how do you get paid uh, all of the above so uh, there is uh, larger companies they already have their in-house sales agents they have their marketing team so in those cases the builder is uh, fronting the cost for the system uh, but a lot of times and, and more often than not these days uh, realtors are representing outside realtors or brokerage are representing builders and uh, they're paying for the cost for the builder as a value add for right. the builder. So do you utilize the cell phone for your engagement and your interaction with your people? Do, do they get uh, uh, notifications over their phone or are they getting emails or are they getting you know, actual uh, uh, flyers and cards in the mail. You know, what kind of media do you guys use for the engagement? Absolutely. So our system is app-based, like I mentioned before. Uh, so everything is done through the smartphone. So mm -hmm. we pretty much want the builder or the agent to earn real estate on the buyer's smartphone. Nice. Okay, which, which is uh, a great idea this day. So everything is done through push notifications and in-app two-way communication. Yep. Awesome. awesome. What do you build? Yeah, so for us, it's, it, it continues to increase. Again, buyer experience and buyer engagement is something that I, I, I believe is not going away in any industry. You know, you're always finding ways to to uh, provide better customer service. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as the industry goes, I think it's, I think it's going to slow down and what i mean by that is i think it's going to level down a little bit you know i, I don't think it's going to tap out i don't think it's going to drop i think it's just going to level and kind of normalize uh eventually i think that the builders throughout the years have done enough including the lending side um they've done enough to kind of prevent another drop like in 2008 and 2009. So do you see buyers biggest challenge the price of the home or is it finding a builder who has actual land and product that meets their needs or is it interest rates or you know what what, what are, what's the buyer's biggest challenge? Well, you know, with, with the with inflation and the price increase, I think that's kind of where, where we are right now. I think most people can agree that that the prices of the homes has kind of gone through the roof a little bit. And, um, <laughs> you know, I think that's that's the biggest challenge. I think buyers are starting to wake up a little bit and be like, hey, this might be a little bit too much right yeah. now. Uh, I think that will, like I said, it will level. Uh, the economy is trying to balance those things out by increasing, you know, wages and different things. But uh, I think it's going to 
it, it should level. If not, are we we're gonna be setting us ourselves up for for something catastrophic in the future. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think that's all we have for you today. Again, we're filming live from IBS 2022. We thank you so much. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Having you. Thank you guys. Appreciate thank it. Absolutely. Thank you. So when you are partnering with a construction lender, what are you actually looking for from them? Well, the number one thing that we need because we're a small company uh, and we got to be very careful about our capital is the construction of perm loan. Okay. That comes in and works very well for us, brings the customer in and gets them uh, tied up when they get the lots you know, settled. Right. Awesome. So here at Thrive, we actually offer a one-time closed construction loan. Right. That's great. Um, great terms. Um, we have it for conventional with 5% down. We have FHA, you know, 93.5% down. And then, of course, we also have VA financing, which is 100% financing. So super, super awesome. And then we just added to our portfolio is land. So we also have land for our customers as well that want to build and want to buy the land and actually build at the same time. So we actually offer all of our products. Um, we're looking to add USDA here soon. So right. that's gonna be awesome. And we also have a jumbo product. So under our Lux field, we have a jumbo product up to 1.5 million. So we pretty much have everything in-house, a one-stop shop, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about what do you feel the builder's market is like right now? Where do you think we're going in 2022? Obviously, we're heading into a changing market. Um, we're gonna see the feds tightening up all throughout the year. Uh, somewhere between one, one and a quarter percent. Uh, and I think on the mortgage side, we're going to see four percent, which historically is fantastic. But the marketplace is so used to three percent and two and a half percent for so many years that it is going to be, I think, a transition with the marketplace. Uh, right now, we're dealing with such a limited amount of inventory uh, in the marketplace that it's tough for people to buy houses and find a house. Uh, and they're getting beat out on hidden wars and things like that. And I think that as that interest rate goes up, uh, you're going to see a little bit of a tamp down on the demand. We hope not too much. Right. That's our, always <laughs> our fear with the Fed. Are they going to go a little too far? And then we got to you know pick it back up. So um, we're all kind of looking, you know, optimistically into 2022. Uh, but we also got to keep an eye out as to where inflation and where the interest rates are going. So as an is of course, you know, definitely heavily involved with the builders. Where do you see our materials and suppliers going this year? Like, do you feel like we're going to steady out? Um, do you feel like we're going to get better with the supply chain? Um, are we going to be looking at how we were in 2021? Yeah, I think it's going to be tough. I think there's going to be some things that maybe the supply chain will improve on. Uh, I think we're going to struggle a lot through 2022 with a lot of those material issues, mainly because um, they just can't get certain components like a refrigerator. You need a you know, chip. Um, lumber is going to continue, I think, to be a little bit high. I'm hoping it's going to come down some from where it spiked again for the third time. Um, but the sawmills are having a tough time staying open. So some of those things you know, are, are going to take a while instead of a month or two months. I think we're going to be struggling with these material issues for most of this year. Well, we really appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. It's been so great here so far. I'm looking forward to the rest of the week. And really, really appreciate you. All Thank right. You Thank so you very much. much. Glad to be here. Morning, everybody. We are live here at the International Builder Show in Orlando, Florida. Uh, Brian Hurd with Build by Thrive. And here I've got two really special guests. I've got Amy Martin, the new homes team at Realtor.com and Eric Farrell, the CEO of the HBA of Dayton. There it is. I got it right that time. <laughs> Good morning, guys. So thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. Uh, let's talk about IBS, since I just came in late last night. How has it been? Is it exciting to get back to it since it's been, what, two years? Yeah, I mean, from my standpoint, it, it's just a great opportunity to reconnect with other executive officers from around the country, sharing ideas, figuring out best practices, understanding that we're not alone in this association world as we're trying to grow and provide more value to our members. But then the show floor has been exceptional. You've probably been on the floor more than I have, but I always get amazed at how much technology is actually in new home construction. And just to get this feel of it, is it's that's my favorite part of walking the show floor. No, and I think you're exactly right on the technology front. 
realtor.com on the technology yeah. side and just this section right here has exploded in the three years it's been since I've been yeah. here. So it's pretty incredible. There's still a buzz. Um, obviously a little bit different than years past, but yeah. not tremendously so. It's exciting to see people. Uh, I got to meet members of my team that I wasn't aware had legs because we've been on <laughs> camera for a year. So, um, you know, got to hug you, Brian. I know, and it's been like years. years. It's been a couple um, years, yeah. It's crazy. So it's been a great event. I'm yeah. very, very glad to be here. Anything that stands out, it was kind of interesting when I was walking in, I went through the whole hydroponic garden section and there's literally lettuce growing on the walls mm -hmm. and all that, which was kind of cool. Anything that sticks out in terms of new technology? I mean, from my standpoint, 3D printing, it's outside and yeah. they're 3D constructing an entire house. I don't yeah. know I didn't stick around to hear the whole whole spiel, but I think that's interesting. I don't know if it's here yet to scale. It's getting closer. It is, but I think that's really interesting and in how that can pivot. From my standpoint, I'm always amazed at the, the ability to take simple products that have been around for builders for so long. Like there's one over, over here, just stone and you can hammer or you can hammer nail it into the wall yeah. like and it looks like it and it feels like it and so it's th that is what i've been most impressed with how about you Amy? i just think building hasn't really changed in so long and we're seeing that change in real time yeah. finally right finally. Finally. finally finally yeah and we're yeah. incorporating technology and using it constructively mm -hmm. i was on the plane from austin coming over here and there were a couple of guys coming in for the show that I would have never, ever <laughs> thought would be here. They're on the technology side. Yeah, nice. So, I mean, we've got a younger crowd coming in and just reverse engineering. So it's, it, it, it's interesting as we talk this tech stuff, I was in one of the sessions yesterday and it was reimagining cities. And this guy gave a one hour long presentation on the different iterations of what he perceives is gonna be it. And you've got to think about how communities are now built with automation in mind, how homes are built with maybe VR rooms yep. in mind, but then also even from, from a real estate standpoint, how, how are companies reimagining empty parking lots as a pop-up shop for a restaurant, like they call it a ghost restaurant. So you just go there, you set it up, and then you can move it in and out, but it's the physical location of a restaurant. So the AI, the VR, how all that now comes into play in creating space within a home and community, I think is really, really, light years ahead but it's here today too yep. so you know let's talk about that it, um, you know augmented reality virtual reality do you all see that really being a mainstay in the uh, new home market or is it just kind of one of those cool gadgets that only the few are going to use I think it will be. Yeah. Um, I think that the people designing it want it to be right now. Sure. And we just have Doesn't to get the, the builders yeah. on sure. board. Um, I think there was really an opportunity at the beginning of COVID to use that kind of thing when sure. people weren't going out so much and we just weren't quite there yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it's growing leaps and bounds in the last yeah. two years That's that right. I've seen. A yeah. lot so, of companies coming up with um, just virtual walkthrough tours of homes. Yeah. Um, we're seeing a lot of model homes go away. We're seeing a lot of well, when you can visually see your specific yeah. model, your design, right. your mm -hmm. elevation yeah. on the lot that you may be purchasing yeah. or wanting to purchase, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, and just think about like the next iteration is you'll be able to go to that site and put on goggles and see what it's going to look like and then actually walk in the space and manipulate your, your physical space within this. And that'll be that's that that'll be cool to see how that plays out but it's also who's going to adapt it and then how long is it going to take to get to you know the custom guy that's doing two or three homes a year is it worth that investment but i think it's going to be here i don't know the scale as to which or how fast but it's inevitable once you start getting real proof of concept yeah you know because everybody nobody wants to be the well some people want to be early adopters but especially home builders they want to wait and see, okay, what is everybody else doing? What's successful? What works? What's cost effective? Um, and then kind of adopt a little bit slower. So yeah. um, since we've got a short period of time, I've got to ask about affordability. Uh, what are your thoughts? And everybody smiles because I know that's, I mean, we all know that, uh, you know, that's the biggest issue facing housing pre-COVID yeah. and COVID just made it substantially worse. 
you know, I mean, we're years away from, yeah. from equilibrium. So what are your thoughts? What are the trends? What are the solutions? I know that's a uh, yeah. tough question, but. It's loaded. And if let me take a stab at it first. Okay. <laughs> so when we talk about affordability, I think we have to begin to also reframe what that means. I think that's the starting point of it. There's uh, something impacting us locally is there's an affordable housing uh, development that's going on in, in Dayton that is being uh, shot down by some celebrity status type individuals. But when the headline reads affordable housing, I think people immediately think low income no, section eight. Correct. So I think we have to begin to talk housing affordability instead of affordable housing. Correct. I think that's the first thing that we as that's we as a um, we as an industry need to begin to have that conversation. But now when you talk about it, it starts at the local level. I mean, our builders are impacted by five things, the five L's of building. And when lumber, materials, and supply chain is out of our control, when labor is, we need to add 740,000 jobs over the next three yeah. years. When you begin to talk all of them, the one that we can impact on the local level is legislation. And so how do municipalities want housing that's affordable. Correct. That is the that is the crux of it because where we live in Dayton, we're anchored by I-70-75, so it's the Highway Capital of America and Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, the state's largest single-site employer at 36,000 jobs. And if we're not meeting both of those markets from, an, from a housing standpoint, there's going to be no place for them to live. Sure. From an economic development standpoint, they're not get, we're not going to have the same sales pitch as neighboring communities and we're gonna lose them if the housing stock is there. Anecdotally, some an individual's post-mortgage income, 80% of that is spent within a five mile radius. And so when you're attracting these $15, $20, job, $20 an hour jobs, you've gotta have a housing stock, which yeah. then brings the business and the commercial to support the entire economic development strategy problem is or that we've all seen is that alternative housing you know manufactured yeah. for example which which is I think a huge growth factor over the next five to ten years you got to fight against the nimbyism you know mm -hmm. not in my backyard right. Right. and once again I mean we're working on these large developments you know from California to Denver to Texas mm -hmm. to Nebraska where they are truly manufactured home yeah. communities but the problem is it's perception and that's why I love kind of your, your branding instead of calling it affordable housing, housing that's affordable. You know, mm -hmm. we've been calling it attainable. Yeah. Um, but that's what we have to do is change the mindset that of what that product looks like. I mean, you've seen some of this stuff. I mean, these are higher roof pitches, dormers, garages, you know, and mm -hmm. they look and feel and, and breathe just like a regular house. Totally. You know, but people still think of it as a mobile home, right. which they haven't been called since the 80s. So, All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Morning. Brian Hurd with Build by Thrive. Um, we've got a special treat here. I've got uh, an overwhelming amount of brain power sitting right here with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got my good friend and partner in crime, Natalie Roberts with Social Strategies, otherwise known as the Builder Queen. Um, Robert Cowes, keynote speaker, and founder and uh, CEO of Smart Touch Interactive. And then we've got uh, Mr. Tam, Mr. David Tam down there. He is the Chief Marketing Officer for Cash Services. And I'm not even gonna try to list the other eight yeah. or nine or Don't 10 companies it. that you've <laughs> started. 14, so. 20, Don't do something it. there. However yeah. it is, but uh, thank you all so much for being here. Really glad to, uh, to have some of these conversations, so. Yeah. Um, Robert, let's start with you. So I know you are a keynote speaker this year and you've been for quite a few years, correct? Yeah. How is it coming back to IBS live? Well, um, first of all, it's a great experience to be in front of everyone again. You know, mm -hmm. we, we missed out on, on this last year. Um, the participants and the audience has been filled with energy. Um, the buzz, you know, around the industry is, is all the innovation and technology right now mm -hmm. and the importance and the buyer expectations of utilizing all this technology. So it's been a, an outstanding show thus far. 
That's awesome. So let's dig into that a little bit, the innovation. Is there anything, and, and anybody can jump in and answer, anything that sticks out in terms of what's new, fresh this year? I think one thing we can jump into right off the bat that plays off something David and I uh, presented to around 80,000 real estate agents a few months back, and we had that shock and awe we saw coming into IVS this year. So yeah. we walked in the door, we're coming up that escalator, and what is the first thing we see? We see hydroponic rooms yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah. coming in. Right. We yeah. are seeing builders integrate this into their homes, specifically in Central Texas, so where the three of us gimmick. are. It's yeah. not just a gimmick. It is real, it is here, mm -hmm. and I know that was my initial takeaway. Robert, what have you seen? Yeah, what do you Hydroponic rooms, huh? Hydroponic! <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, you know, I've been really focused on the marketing mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. and, and the buzz uh, around the show is the importance of content, all of the virtual content. Yeah. There is uh, talk about the, the upcoming uh, unreliance of the model home. Um, and That's really, great that multiple point. times yeah. this morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and what is uh, replacing that are retail storefronts yep. that will provide all the experience, but virtually. Kind of like an Apple store for builders. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Exactly. So, so, go ahead, keep going. No, I, want, I, want, I want you to keep rolling on this, man. <laughs> no. This is great. <laughs> no, I mean, imagine uh, walking into. Uh, this store, you've already done all your research right. at home, and now you want to just validate the, the experience and see and touch the materials, and you're just walking on into the metaverse and putting on this experience and then being able to touch and feel yeah. and, and really get a feel of the size of the rooms and everything, and then connect that with you know the experience of being able to touch and engage and capture that intelligence from a marketer standpoint, yeah, understand buddy. the experience, as well as then ultimately be able to then follow up with that buyer by pushing them into CRMs. So I have a quick question on that. So I'm a buyer and I'm coming in and I have this meta experience and I'm interactive and I'm experiencing. Now I'm stepping into the home builder role and as a home builder, and a marketer, what does that provide me on the Intel side on how I can better provide an experience both in the product design, selection design, cost of home, location of home, with the data you're able to garner from that? Yeah, a lot of these experiences that, that I've seen thus far and a lot of the, the exhibitors here have the, uh, uh, the features in which you can touch and make selections. Right. So you can change colors, the tiles That's and walls cool. and all that stuff and save that and start yep. capturing preferences and where exactly do they spend more time. Which but, is a process that traditionally takes, can right. take yeah. hours and days and weeks, so. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that color. Let's yeah. try that right. one. <laughs> Swipe, right there. Swipe yeah. left. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that we're, when we're talking about the customization of the home itself, Robert, I, you're absolutely right, the customization of the home and the different textures and amenities and everything, but what we've been talking about with some of the other vendors here is, Consumers are looking for that actual new life experience of, okay, well, we can also stitch in key points of where your gym is, where you drop your kids off at school. We can take you on your commute virtually in an augmented or virtual environment and stitch that together with the customization of the home. Because you know, from our consumer behavior research, that's really what someone's looking for. What's my new life gonna be like? And because of people like Robert and you guys at Thrive, that's where we're going as an industry, right? Because you're pushing the boundaries there. Because you're not just moving into that house, you're moving into that community. No. Does it have all of those amenities, the restaurants, you're exactly the gyms, right. You're exactly the schools, right. the facilities, right. all of that. So, so you can make an really informed decision with the accessibility of data, right? With this advent of technology. And it's the very first time in the history of the industry in this country that, that the technology and then the desires are actually starting to meet, right? And we can meet right. that demand, so exciting. Well, and as we all go back many years, Robert and I can go back to the days of home builders coming in and creating what we call a SIF, which is a community information sheet that we <laughs> handed a buyer and it had, oh, wow. hey, HEB in the state of Texas, public, <laughs> so we're here in Florida, on a piece three miles, Crazy. and there was no mapping, there was no yeah. real interaction between that space. So to see that come, I know you can It's over it. yonder. I know, right? It's <laughs> over down the road, mile block or so. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a really good point. One thing I, I'd like to dive into, you presented this week, mm -hmm. and the key topic was? To pivot or not to pivot. And <laughs> what does that mean? Well, we've, over the last 
uh, two years, we've had a, had an assortment of pivots from everything as to like how do we manage our marketing budgets? Do we really need to be advertising when we have so many transactions going on? To like you know what what do we offer when we're out? What do we say, tell buyers when we're out of inventory? How do we reset expectations? Where is the value in waiting mm. longer to, to, for for that community? But mm -hmm. one of the, the the coolest and most simplest pivots that that we've all experienced, and it's all over this uh, trade show exhibit floor, and that's QR codes. Yeah. Like it's something as simple as a darn QR code. Okay. And so revolutionary right now, we all got them. <laughs> we all yeah, have right? been around for a while. They've they been just a, weren't utilized. They weren't utilized. And so um, at Smart Touch, being a provider of not just marketing and advertising, but the technology to capture leads, mm. a simple pivot had been has been, hey, right now, historically, when a buyer goes to a model home, they have to get a card, fill out their yeah. name, And there's always a fake out. signature to oh, make sure. Yeah. And then hand <laughs> it over to somebody. <laughs> Sales is going to enter it, wink, wink, if, if you're good. If you're not, up on a regular basis. Sure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so the QR code, um, a simple you know, innovation like that now allows the buyer to go in and scan it and then provide their information right away with a click and never have to touch a piece of paper. Most everybody has autofill on their phone. Mm -hmm. And so that... Little pivot and tweak. I mean, your has, capture rate has should gone, go through the roof. Yeah, yeah. the capture yeah. rate of the registrations, but now like the experience for a buyer, you don't have to fill out a piece of paper. No, the the salesperson yeah. that we care about them themselves as well. They don't have to manually enter. We can start with automation. So that um, on our, our advertising, it. pretty much like anything that you see out there. You know, it's not just your menus at the restaurants anymore. Yeah. It's pretty much everything. Oh, yeah, They're back. So, QR so. code. All right, we are back here at the International Builder Show in Orlando, Florida. Brian Hurd, uh, Vice President of Build by Thrive. I've got another really good group of guests here. Uh, Natalie Roberts, Principal of Social Strategies. Uh, we've got Wade Lyle, the Executive Vice President of Business Development for yes. Skyline Champion. Yes. Uh, my good friend Sean McDonald, um, the founder of Vanguard National Builder Group. Yeah. And we already know David Tam down there at the end, so <laughs> you've got too many superlatives, but we'll just say again, Chief Marketing Officer for CAS Services. Great. All right, so I want to set the uh, table a little bit here and kind of talk about how we all connected. So I believe it was just about two years ago to the day. It's fun to believe. We, uh, it was actually my CFO that said, hey, let's go out to Louisville, Kentucky. Never been, had no uh, real knowledge of manufacture, but that's what it was. It was basically a summit based around manufactured housing. Um, we met and I think we clicked because we shared kind of that same idea that manufactured housing the way it's sold, the way it's developed within communities. We sat down with Fannie Mae. It's different. It's evolving. It needs to evolve. Mm. So fast forward a few months after that, after those conversations, I mean, these are two of the brightest minds in home building that I know. And okay. we got together, had a conversation, and it just seemed like, okay, if manufactured wants to compete with site built, have to start acting like it, you know, and I think that's where you guys made perfect sense. So we kind of looped you in with uh, the team at Skyline Champion, and it's been uh, it's been bliss ever since, right? <laughs> it has. It's been, yeah. So let's kind of dig right in. Uh, I really want you to share Genesis. Let's talk about that because that's really kind of the most exciting thing that you guys have right now. Yeah, perfect. So I think a couple things. One comment, we're not actually looking to compete with SiteBuilt. We want to be a supplement, right? We want to be an addition. When you, when you look at what's going on in the home building world today, Good point. affordability is very challenged. Yes. Big issue. Big issue. And so we want to come in and actually kind of backfill that affordability yep. gap that, that commodities have taken, the labor costs on site have taken. Good correct. And, and we think we can come in and actually supplement that and help the, the country solve yes. that issue. So. When, when you go back to what you were talking about, you know, looking at, at what we've done as manufacturers, we've traditionally sold to independent retailers. Mm -hmm. they're, they're more like a, an automobile dealership, yeah. if you want to think of it. They have inventory on site, customer comes in, we help them with the scattered lot, we deliver it. Very affordable, um, great product where a lot of builders don't like to build scattered. Um, 
And then the land lease communities has been a huge piece of us, um, of our, our foundation of what we do, where they develop, we ship the house in, they set it up, similar to a subdivision, but they're leasing the, the land, right? Yeah. And that's been our heritage. Um, to become a, a world-class you know, builder, if you want to think of it that way, we really need to get, get partnered up with the developers and the builders yes. and be that affordable solution. And so we've had to do things as an industry, and what Skyline Champion's done is we've really looked at it from a brand perspective and said, okay, we've had this Genesis brand around for years where we tried to get into the builder world, but it was more modular, um, multiple boxes, difficult to assemble yeah. on site, and by the time we put the best product out there, you could stick build it for the same price, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so we didn't get the traction, and so Genesis kind of went away. But now that that affordability gap, attainability gap is really there, it's like, okay, Genesis, it's time to go. The GSEs really helped, right? Yes. With the financing yes. program Absolutely. that's come with the uh, cross mod. Yeah. And it really allowed us to say, okay, let's go to our roots of manufactured HUD code to the cross mod spec. And how do we make it more mainstream and more accessible? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, so, you know, that's really where we've, we've come. The, the relationship that started a couple of years ago and, and meeting with these guys, you know, we, we know a lot about building in a factory. We know a lot about transporting and delivering a house to a site, but to develop a subdivision, um, we don't know what we're doing, right? So we, we've got aligned with great <laughs> that's partners. That's what we're here for, yeah. And, and that's Absolutely. what this collaboration is all about. How do we take this to that next level? So well, let's talk about that for just a quick second, because to me, Skyline is probably one of the most innovative from a manufactured standpoint in the industry. You give us an opportunity to work with you and it was based upon your guys' vision with Genesis to actually take a product and make sure that one, we could put that into neighborhoods, Yes. not just from a price point standpoint, but also from a long-term standpoint for buyers that they can actually have an asset that builds equity yes. and that they can have an opportunity also to grow their own personal wealth. Right. Um, and so there's, there's some other layers to this that I think you guys have integrated in to these designs that are coming out right now. First development is underway, yep. which is super exciting. Where's that one? So we're in Texas, development number one, right. um, just outside of Austin. And so to, to take a development opportunity that you guys are actually investing in with brand new product that is, I mean, you, we were a part of designing it. So you can't tell, in our opinions, the difference between a stick built and, and a modular. And that's been part of the stigma in the industry. So you're coming forward with really approaching this affordability head on with product that you guys are investing in out of the box in what you normally do. Why are you guys doing that? The, the elevations of our products, the exteriors of our products has probably been the, the, the biggest challenge we've had, right? We build in a factory, we have to ship it down the road and to try to keep the cost on site minimal, we're limited on height restrictions, widths, which really limits what you can do on an elevation. Yep. And, and what you guys have helped us do is to really think about the modern looks of today, they're very sleek, right? And, and you're not looking for a tremendous amount of construction on site to get real high pitches. Things are more modern today. And, and you guys brought that vision and that look, and, and, and it fits what we can build and transport and assemble on site, very cost effective. And so yeah. it, it, it's a no brainer, you know, opening our eyes to what people want to look at in a subdivision when they drive in exactly. versus a scattered lot where it's back off an acre or two acres and elevations aren't the most critical. Um, so, so it's really forcing us to think out of the box um, right. and really get innovative on how we do it. You, you know, we're gonna have to look for different suppliers and products than we've used in the past to be able to bring that trend into our technology and the way we build. Absolutely. Brian Hurd with Build by Thrive here at IBS Orlando 2022 with my best friend, David Tam over there. We've been hanging out all day. All day. And this yeah. is our last conversation of the day. And we've got Nancy Hurd, branch manager with Thrive Mortgage with us as well. Lovely. So I know you have an agenda. I do. I know you, it's, <laughs> I do. it's right He's behind the uh, camera right there. <laughs> We're not gonna go off of that. Perfect. Cool. I do want to talk about lead gen though. Okay. You know, and, and obviously uh, before, as we were talking about this, 
you know, we have some concerns. Is it effective? How do you really do it? Sure. Talk to us about what it is, how effective it is, yeah. you know, how to manage it, that sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. That, great question, and thank you for being here. By the way, it's been an amazing day. Everybody's breaking down. You can hear tape going off in the background, yes. but it has been incredible. I think we're the only ones still actually working Good. right now. We're going to be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so, my coffee. Lead generation, man. I, what I want to do is kind of unwind time. Let's go back and look at, you know, what was happening with lead generation yeah. 10, 20 years ago. And it used to be like lead generation was let's post a Google ad and trick somebody into clicking on it to go yeah. to a website and then call them every hour hoping that they would do business with yeah. us, right? Like yeah. that, that's what lead gen was. Yeah. And it has evolved over the course of the last two decades to instead of trying to trick somebody into something so that we can blow them up on the phone yeah. to reach them, it's more of can we try and figure out what they're looking for, meet the consumer where they are in new construction, not always new construction, but particularly new construction because we're here at IBS, and then, and then serve them as best we can based off of where we met them. Sure. So, so let me explain that a little bit, right? When we're doing lead generation, and I hate the term lead. I really, I want to like sure. extract that from the industry. You were saying that earlier, and yeah. I loved your response, which was. Wait, can we just call them by their names? Call them by their names. Right? Yeah. Or, or an opportunity, yep. or a relationship, or a, a, a worst <laughs> yeah. case scenario, a prospect, right? Yes. Even that has a little bit of sales. Well, lead gen in our industry, in the mortgage side, definitely has kind of a negative connotation because okay. You, you think of a lead gen as this cold lead that, that goes nowhere. That right. we, it's potentially, oftentimes, wasted time. And so it seems how do we, so transactional. Yes, yeah, so how do, we, how do we meet the consumer where they are mm -hmm. and make it a, a valuable to both sides? Totally, that, great, great question. So what mm -hmm. that, in my opinion, comes down to, and I have, I have a, quite a bit of research, white papers, um, that, that look at this exact subject. And we look at it at, in mortgage, insurance, title, sellers, and buyers, right? So we've got a good omni-channel ecosystem of what best practices are, and it's a moving target. Yeah. So in, intra-COVID, what happened during COVID is people were spending a lot more time behind screens. Yeah. So what we found is when somebody was actually looking to purchase a home and apply for a mortgage, when they registered on one website, they would register on four to six others in a 30 day period because they had already decided, okay, I'm ready to do business, yeah. okay? So when that happens, what that says is, you're not special, right? What you have to do then is reach out to them with what your value proposition is. And with Thrive, Build by Thrive, it is incredible what you're doing. We're gonna talk about that here in a minute, right? Because that is, that's the bait that you're using sure. to bring them sure. in, but it's not bait, it's value, right? And so what we look at is, what are we doing in the first 24 hours? That is that is the most important time period, right? It's just like when a baby is born. That first 24 hours, man, it's critical. Yeah. And, and so what we need to do is make sure, did we give them what they needed, right? If they registered and gave us a pertinent message of, hey, I'm looking for X, Y, Z, did we, were we responsible business people? Did we call, did we text, did we email? How did they come to us and did we research that before we actually just got out of the phone and say, hello, Mr. or Mrs. Smith, would you like to buy a home? You know? Yeah. <laughs> right. And that's what- yeah. Which is so disingenuine, so of course. Yeah. Well, it is, yeah. and you probably have a lot of experience sure. with that, and it usually converts very low. And when we talk about the spectrum of conversion, what I'm talking about is converting traffic and leads Correct. into appointments and deals. Right. right which is for the, the people themselves, not the leads, right? Okay. So we look at a cocktail. We look at, um, we splay by how old the lead is, how old, the, and I'm still doing it. You can slap me every time I say it, lead. But if there is a, uh, a, 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 a an opportunity, let's say, that is seven days old, you're gonna treat Ooh, that that's up. A, that's a good one. Opportunity, you're gonna treat I like that opportunity. it, that's another one. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Um, you're gonna treat that very differently than an opportunity that is 180 days old. Sure. And we know this through A-B testing tens of thousands of data points. Yeah. And what we had found is uh, in, in the buyer space, it takes about a year, right? It takes about a year to take an opportunity to an actual transaction. And what we have found is that fairly aggressive, but spear phishing with, with actual, okay, so you're looking for a certain price point or a lifestyle, I'm gonna try and reach you with that type of content. So I'm gonna give you a landing page, or a testimonial, or a downloadable PDF. Or if you're, you, you know you're moving schools, I'm gonna try and pull some information about that new community where you're going to be and provide that to you to say, hey, listen, I'm, 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 I hear you. Yeah. I hear you and I'm here for you. Now let's get you set up for success where we're trying to go. D opposed to, let me just, what was it, 10 days of pain back in the day where it was yeah. just, let's, let's call them 5,000 times in the first 10 days and if they don't end it, sure, it's a bad That was it, that was it done, away. exactly. And done, right. So, that's Which is a huge issue in the new home sales market. You mm -hmm. know, again, they're taught to 
the first, usually it's the first 30, maybe 60 days, follow up, follow up, follow up. If you don't get any traction, gone, yeah. gone. If, like we were talking about earlier, they even get that little registration card input into whatever system they may be using. Right, right. So, which is very, very interesting because what we had found was the status quo when when leads came in, opportunities, did it again. Um, I'm, I'm undoing seven years of That's okay. Here, That's okay. Is, well, let's say you called them at 12:15 uh, p.m. every single day for seven days. They didn't answer. Bad lead. No, they're probably in the bathroom. They're probably on lunch break. Yeah. And what you should be doing, we started to A-B test, calling at different times True. from different yeah. numbers, leaving voicemails and like not leaving voicemails. I'm not trying to trick anyone into anything. I'm really, at the end of the day, they came to me. They searched on Google. They came to my website. They volunteered their information because they trusted my value proposition and they're sitting there tapping their finger asking for help. Sure. So if those five things happened, then it is appropriate to try and reach them in different channels of communication. What we find is that the younger demographic, 35 and under, they don't answer the phone. Yeah. So just because somebody's not answering the phone because you tried five or seven times in the first, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks, whatever that tempo is for you, that's still a very good lead. Try texting, try video texting. And what we actually did is we started to look at lead sources, opportunity sources. Sure. So I do advertising on Facebook. You do advertising on Google. You do just content, and so you get organic. How you follow up with those different leads, you should you should try to A-B test, truly. So so for, for your Facebook leads on opportunities that come in, try calling first for a week. And then that next week, try texting first. And then that next week, try video texting first. And then that next week, try emailing a piece of Cause content. Because everybody's a little bit different, and you just never know. And how many states yeah. is Thrive in right now? Oh, 40, I believe 43, 44. It's a lot. I can't I'm even keep up. looking at a map right here yeah. and it's all red. It's pretty much everything, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, a couple. Yeah, There's only it, a few. It, you guys are everywhere yeah. and you grew super fast. We did. Right? And so and so because of that, what you're going to find is your follow-up in Florida is going to be very sure. different than your follow-up in California. Yeah. And it's going to change over time as demographics change. Yes. In Texas, you're getting a lot of young people from Google and Tesla right. and everything else like that. So we got to we got to try and vary up how we're trying to reach those opportunities. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about kind of the anatomy of what a opportunity is. <laughs> What's think? the best way to actually get that opportunity oh. in the first place? Oh goodness gracious! So. I know I'm, we're getting kind of granular. No, here, this is great yeah. because I, I I'm very very passionate about this subject and I. I'm probably going to get slapped by some of the con companies that I work with as a consultant, okay. but I don't believe in paid lead generation I, as a primary source of business long term. What I believe in is, okay, you got to put gas in the tank, sure. right? We got to feed our, our agents and our loan officers and everything. So we're going to have to do paid leads for a temporary period of time. But I don't want you dependent on that model in perpetuity. Sure. And the reason for that is I had an opportunity to go to Google headquarters, their data center in Arizona, and really sit in some rooms that I probably shouldn't have been in. Yeah. And I got to see the algorithm and parts of the algorithm, I, guess, yeah. I should say, and be in some think tanks. And, and there's volatility. And they know there's volatility. Yeah. We see yeah. cost per lead go up and down and up and down. We see quantity go up and down. And then we see quality go up and down. Right. And so I can't rely on that. If it's constantly changing, then I want to be able to generate my opportunities internally, organically, right? And that becomes a self-licking ice cream cone of business. And how do I do that? Well, you gotta have a really badass website. And by the way, got if, if you have an opportunity, go to the Thrive Mortgage website. It's incredible, yeah. okay? ThriveMortgage.com, yeah. It's yeah. really, yeah. really yes. neat, yeah. you know what I mean? And there's, there's awesome tools and you can go into maps and you've got all of your agents. And listen, before I came here, I went through your entire site with a fine tooth comb and I crawled it and I analyzed it. And, and I've got some pointers, of course, yeah. but you are in a really good spot. Well, that was kind of a culmination of our rebrand and our marketing team did an amazing Ladies job. So good for you. <laughs> Time now is 4.45. Time check. Time check. <laughs> right. Closing so, in 15 minutes. This is really good. Again, we're going to the like how to actually generate, and then we're we'll be closing in 15 yeah. minutes. Right. Say that one more time. It's, it's, he said we've already got, gone into yeah, the Yeah, this places. is perfect. So, yeah. so, okay, so we'll cut up that entire piece out. So when we're talking about generating leads, and by the way, for the marketing team at Thrive, great job. Website's gorgeous. Seriously. <laughs> um, what we want to try and do, though, is capture as much traffic as we can to our site organically based off of search terms that people are actually looking for. And this is where companies get tricked. Yeah. You know, they say, hey, I'm gonna do search engine optimization. And they're like, okay, great. And we're gonna show you a bunch of keyword terms that nobody's actually looking yeah. for, right? right. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to marry up 
consumer behavior, what they're looking for, versus the actual Google ranking on page, right? So, and typically mm -hmm. page one and two. Now, this is a really interesting point. We used to only get leads opportunities from page one and two. Because of COVID, people are spending more time behind screens. Yep. Yeah. And so we're finding really good opportunity flow on page three and a trickle on page four. You, that would never happen back in the day, right? And it's because they're registering four to six other websites. They're really looking to care, right? About yeah. the character of who they're going to be working with. So if we can get our site to rank for all of the terms that we care about, the consumer cares about. Yeah. And then it has to have some vital conversion elements. Do you want me to go through those really quick? Please do, actually. Okay, so when we're talking about website conversion elements, these are best practices in the industry, and you would be shocked if you went to some of your competitor sites, because I looked, a lot of them don't have them. Yeah. Clickable phone number above the fold. When I say above the fold, it what's, it's what's loading sure. before sure. you have to scroll, right, old newspaper term. And it actually has to list the number. If it doesn't, well, they're going to be driving around looking at homes, yeah. right? They're going to be listing it to, you're reading it to, you know, yeah. the person in the passenger seat. But typically, you want to have a very strong value proposition or call to action above the fold, right? Telling them who you are and what you're doing within three and a half seconds. So Google has a rule now called Core Web Vitals, and it says if your website doesn't load in two and a half seconds, you're gone. You're gone. You're getting really? kicked off. Right, wow. and so, and that is, that is, I would probably say 75% of the mortgage. There is no patience today. There's just no, not, no, no. It used to be three short point, attention span. It, it used to be 3.5 seconds. Now it's 2.5. Google is clearly saying it will be less than two seconds yeah. in the near future. Wow. Because we're an immediate oh, gratification society. Yeah. To the point where it's, it's people will get angry. If I get they angry. Don't, of course, get you're right. For you're sure. right. Yeah. Don't you get angry when I, you go to a website and it's like loading, and then you try to click on something, and it brings you somewhere else, and then there's a pop-up? Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. And you say, you know what? I give up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Cry yeah. on. Yeah. And, and then I done. throw the phone out the window. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. so, that's one way to do it. And then we can also through email marketing. And when I say email marketing, I'm not send them a random email every single week with some block of copy. It's yeah. try and provide them what they're looking for. And so what we do is we bifurcate and trifurcate, and we have different email campaigns based off of how they registered. How did they come sure. in? What's their demographic? What are they looking for? What's their price point? How is their credit? You can get that deep. You can have 55, hundreds of email campaigns if you want to meet those different consumers. And those will generate you more leads because what happens, they share those with their friends and family, right? And that's that's what I would want to do. I want you to be able to generate all of your leads, your opportunities internally with your website, with your email marketing, and with your word of mouth and referral, and eventually tip the scales, not do any paid lead generation unless you absolutely have to. Because it's not a sustainable business model in my opinion. Yeah. So Nancy, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit, uh -oh. but VA one-time close. Just a real quick overview of what it is. Why it, Why is it such an aggressive program? That was a decent lead-in. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about it because um, I know you're passionate about it. So yeah, the VA one-time close, of course, it's an amazing program for our veterans. Um, it, it's exactly what it sounds like if you're in the market to build a home. Uh, there are multiple ways you can finance building a, a new home or a new custom home. Um, there are one-time closes and two-time closes. The one-time close really allows you to close one time up front before the construction begins, and um, it saves you money. Uh, the one-time close also on the VA allows us to finance in uh, a lot of that carrying cost, so the interest is built into the loan so that the, the veteran doesn't have a monthly payment. But you have to have a ton of you have to have a big down payment, right? No, zero down payment on a VA loan. And would you have to have perfect credit? No, actually, we can go down to what six forty. You know your really? guidelines. Yeah. Really? Isn't that, isn't that awesome? Amazing. See yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah. As so, a veteran, so I did not even you're, know. So you're that. you're you're really? playing no. perfectly yeah. into the, what the question's for. So yeah. it is. That's the same thing we hear all the time. Really. Yeah. I had no idea, or well, no, you can't do that. And, and talking to clients uh, really across all loan types, VA, con, uh, conventional FHA, FHA most, most, borrowers, most borrowers think that they have to have a 20% down payment to build yeah. a house. Yeah. That's an and, old construct. Correct. I mean, on conventional, we can do 5% down. But that you know, FHA and VA market where you can do 0 to 3.5% down, that's an amazing way to get into a home, especially given the inventory shortages that we have right now. Very Being able true. to build a house. Not have to wait for a house to come on the market, but it'll be able to get what you want the way you want it. I mean, you, and you all just played perfectly into this. But so we have, obviously, there is a really cool story to tell. You know, especially, again, that the, the uh, VA one-time close, which is near and dear to Nancy and I. But mm -hmm. if I can go to a veteran and say, you don't have to have perfect credit. You don't have to have any money to put down. 
with, exactly like you just said, the house you really want, instead of shoehorning yourself into some resale, all due respect to resale. Absolutely. Um, but how can lead gen help specifically? Let's just say we want to talk about VA sure. as it is. Yeah. How do we hone in on that? What would we do? Gosh. Well, well, this goes to one of the sessions we had earlier today when we were talking with the Skyline gentleman, and it's education. Education. I mean, my goodness. Like, and I, I consider myself pretty freaking savvy when it comes to the real estate space and digital stuff, and I genuinely didn't know that. You know, most and, people don't most because people there's don't. very few. I mean, there's very few companies that do VA mm -hmm. one time close. Very few. Loans. Well, very few. Let's face it. And, and I'm not denigrating any of my competitors, but very I few feel people a little who humble do humble brag coming on. No, no. But there are very That's few. Okay. There are very few companies who do VA well. Right. There are a lot of veteran lenders out there or lenders who tout themselves as VA lenders. But but let's face it, do they do really do it right? Do they really put the veterans' interests first? And that's where, um, you know, the leadership in our company really saw a need yeah. and tried to fill it. Yeah. And and that VA, you know, veterans generally, you know, know that they can do a zero down loan, mm -hmm. but they try to build a house and they're not able to do it. So that because really they're always is, told they're preconditioned that no, you can't do it. I didn't right. think I could. I, so I, I've yeah. been out of the service for seven, seven, seven-ish years, something like that, mm -hmm. and and I did not think I could qualify to build a home because I, I went through a divorce and my life was kind of a disaster for a little while after I got out. That happens to a lot of veterans, right? Yeah. And, and Thank so, you for your service, Bob. Yes, oh, thank um, you. I, I have all my fingers and toes. I won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. um, it, thank you, though. Um, and so I think it, goodness gracious, if we go to all the different branches and not as a sales pitch, just to educate. Education, right. this exactly. This thing that you can have a normal life. I mean, the number one group of of homeless people as veterans in this yeah. country, and it freaking breaks my heart. Yeah. Could well, we and, fix that? Like, well, and just for them to, to know that they don't have to go out and do a resale to buy a house to be right. able to do, take advantage of their VA entitlement. Yep. So it, it really does, um, a lot of veterans think that, that that custom home option is just not an option. Totally. Yeah. It, it, does that play into some of the things that we saw today of price points? Because in Colorado, I mean, 550 you got to be making a fair amount of cash, you know, right out the door and for an enlisted guy. That's tough. I, I have to tell you, though, VA is one of the most incredible programs because it gives well, us a lot of... 550, 700, 800. Yeah. Then, uh, You're kidding me. No. No. Yeah. You no. can do you can do a zero down up to, what, million? Well, on the on, on some the of our programs, you can limited. go up to zero down up to a million dollars on yeah. some of our I'm programs. I'm crossing my arms yeah. because... Yeah. I didn't know, and I'm kind of grumpy right now. Yeah, the one, and the, and the one-time close. There are going to be some limitations on the yeah. one-time close in terms of price point, um, but it but it is it, it op opens up a lot of opportunity. To Good use thing that we're word not again. live because yeah. we'll put in our uh, little equal housing opportunity since Zero. we did talk yeah, about rates totally. and programs. But yeah, but yeah, we didn't go into detail on rates. Perfect. So, yeah. but let's kind of bring it home though. So you know, again, that that's a very specific segment that we want to target, yeah. yes. get the word out that needs yeah. to hear this best way to do it and you said education okay yeah. so what's what's the best how do we delivery? get how do we get that message out there yeah so truthfully if it were if I, if I were in charge of getting this message out to, to all of the veterans what I would start with is really doing some social media sure. content right because especially if you're overseas you, you're, you're probably not going to be reading all of your emails Correct. but you're definitely going to be on social with your friends your family all that right. trying to stay connected and so so just doing some educational postings and then testimonials so like yes. I'm a marketing guy marketing 101 is you know you find you find customers clients that really love and adore what you do and I know you have a lot of them and then get them to just speak from their heart about using some of these programs hey listen yeah. I did I got a six hundred thousand dollars and what it meant to me yeah what it meant yeah. to you and how it changed your life and the opportunity it gave you sure. you yeah. know what I mean sure. and, and the impact it had on and, it's, and then start with that gain some traction and then it will come the business will come what you need to do is continue to evolve and keep pace and educate with what's happening in the market today because that's the scariest thing for a veteran honestly what i shouldn't say the scariest but one of the scariest wow. is i can't keep track with all the changes and regulations and paperwork because i'm in the midst of separating from the military with in right. itself is like removing a limb and that's what a really yeah. good va lender specific, exactly. especially construction really can do and, and nancy how long have you been doing this for 30 years 30 years so I appreciate you guys being yeah, our uh, late hour guinea pigs. We yeah. are actually over time now, but <laughs> yes, um, thank you so much. Our construction guru, Nancy Hurd, and you. just all around great guy, <laughs> hey, David thanks. Tam. I thank you. It. Really appreciate it's the discussion. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for it's having me. It's been fun. All right. Thank you.